This month's episodes are brought to you by the kind support of our champions of the Red Moon, Martin, Hoi Bear, and David. If you want to be one of our champions, check us out on Patreon, where you can find our Q&A show, three bonus campaigns, raw early access recordings, as well as opportunities to play with us. With that said, night will now fall upon Chicago and the sacrifice. There's no fucking way I'm in Chicago and I'm staying in some apartment. We're going to a club tomorrow. You're not gonna miss out. It's gonna be one hell of a party and, and, and don't worry, man. You'll you get your fill. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. There is an entire article about how you are no longer an important or active part of the art scene in Chicago. I know. Who's behind this? Close the door, Vincent. This is Red Moon role-playing. You should try and be a little more like Ada or myself. You, you don't see her as, as cattle? Do you? No, I never feed from her. But you, is that how you refer to other models? It's just... No, I never use that term. I think it's vulgar in the extreme. You know... Uh... Okay, I, 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 thanks. I, I get your advice as well. But I, as far as networking goes, and and contacts and possibilities for, you know, gigs, I, I see it more as that. You know, I, I, I realize I'm, I'm not talking to much people. My agent does most of that stuff for me, but I don't have an agent who would talk to these kind of folks. Maybe. No, of course not. Just, just, just. Keep in mind, I'm sure you've seen shows like The Sopranos and such, that dealing with other kindred is a bit like getting into bed with a mob boss. You will organise a gig to play at the Succubus Club or what have you, and they will make it seem like they're doing you a favour. And then they will expect something from you, and it will be another errand like this one, except probably a little less pleasant and so it will go until you're so deeply in their depths that there will be no way out and you will certainly have no contact with the mortal side of things by that point. I grimace and uh, I say yeah I, you start out as a runner right? So I hope that's not mm -hmm. Well uh, all, of, all of this is anecdotal I haven't fallen into a pit like that, but I've heard from other members of my my family, my clan, that that's what happens in this Camarilla, so just be cautious. I certainly am. <sighs> Will do, man. It's good. I I appreciate it. Thanks. Just, uh... It's quite alright. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to make a quick phone call to the hospital. Yeah, no, of course. You it's... don't need to leave the room. It's alright. I'm not going to be saying anything deeply personal. Oh, shit. I didn't bring my toothbrush. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I could probably do with brushing mine. That's a good point. And I lay down on uh, the bed. Uh, I'm just going to give a quick call to the... Uh... Well... To the number I got a call from previously, so I guess it would be the nurse's station. Yeah. So you called them up, and it's uh, it's around morning time now. It's around seven o'clock. So the first nurses for the day shift has just uh, arrived, and you recognize the voice when uh, when when uh, the nurse picks up, and you've talked to her before. You're sure. Hello. This is this is Dolph. We spoke before. Hello, Dolph. Hi. How can I help you? Well, I was just very curious as to the condition of, of Ada. Uh, I've been out of the city because, as I mentioned uh, last night, work demands and such. Uh, and so this is the soonest I've been able to get to a phone. Uh, how, how is everything? <laughs> well, Dolph, I was actually just about to call you because we, we do have wonderful news for you. Um... Ada is breathing on her own. 
and she is just on the cusp of waking up. So if you can make it out here as soon as possible, uh, so you can be here when she wakes up, it would be, I think it would be great for her. I will get on the next plane, uh, I promise you, and barring ill weather and plane cancellations, I should be there with you somewhere today. Uh, if I can't get there, obviously I might be in flight, so I probably won't be able to call. Please do get in touch with her parents, and just, um, I, I would just greatly appreciate it. I will definitely be there. Uh, by tomorrow evening, if if all else fails, I'll hire a car and drive my way back to Chicago. Of course, um, we've tried to get a hold of her parents. We haven't been successful in 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 a, some time now, so I'm not I'm not quite sure what what they're doing. Um, well, that's unusual. Well, in that case, uh, uh, I know you're not running a hotel service, and I'm sure your beds are very valuable. Uh, but if there's uh, if there's no way of getting in touch with them, given everything she's been through, I would certainly hate it if she were discharged before I could come and collect her. Oh. Uh, I will I will definitely be there tomorrow evening or well later tonight uh, I should say. Uh, so if I can't make it during the day, please just. Well, I don't need to tell you how to do your job, do I? No, no, Dolph. Let's uh, let's uh, you know if she wakes up. Which I believe she will today at some point. Let me call you and let's see where you're at and let's figure something out. And I can promise you that she will not wake up alone. At least I will be here. Thank you so, so much. You, you are an angel and if there's anything I can do for you in future, I know, you know it's not like you, you're in a service industry where you take tips. But if there's anything I can do, you have truly been a wonder in looking after her. I know she will appreciate it. I certainly do. Well, thank you very much, Dolph. It's it's no problem at all. It's just my job. Please just make sure no harm comes to her. Of course. She is in a protected ward. Nothing will happen to her. Thank you. I hang up. First thing I do is change my voicemail to say, Hi, this is Dolph Shang. I am currently in flight. Therefore, I cannot answer your call, but I will call you back as soon as possible. Just before Vincent finds his own place to sleep, he'll take up Malenkov's offer of a very quick snack. I don't have time to be subtle about it. I don't have time to really even enjoy it. But I do get a quick, just a quick bite. All right. And as I go to slumber, oddly, there's one final thought on my mind. I find myself thinking back to how Alan looked how he really looked. At the time, I didn't really have time to process it. It was all quite quick, but I'm thinking about it. It was truly horrifying. There was something about that. Something about the symmetry. Something about the, uh, the way there were, the way there were things inside him. Sire really does like Unknown's work. Is that what she's in the mood for? Something grotesque? Maybe I could... Hmm. And I'm sort of thinking that as I fade into death or whatever it is that we do when we sleep. We all have a relatively peaceful night. Nothing really happens. Um, but Dolph, your phone uh, wakes you up pretty early uh, in the evening. It's just around um, dusk. So the sun is just... It's just sitting. Um, and you can see it's the hospital that's calling. Sluggishly. Having to coax blood back into these dead bones. I lift the phone which I had clutched in my hand during my sleep. To my ear. And say, Shung. Uh, I, I love Dolph. It's, it's from the hospital again. Um... So oh, hello, hello, Ada. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's about Ada. Um. So so she is. Uh, she's she's actually awake. And um, do you, where are you? She's asking for you. I have just arrived in Chicago. Uh, 
Thank you. You didn't leave any messages for me, did you? My phone has been having some problems. No, this is the first time I'm calling you. I'm just calling you before Thank I you. go home. Okay, well, I will be I will be heading straight there. Thank you so much for telling me as soon as you have. Oh, well, you are very welcome. Right, yep, I will be getting up and making my way to the hospital. So you've only been sleeping for around five hours. Everyone else is asleep. Um, do you do anything else before you leave the apartment? Uh, I don't. I don't need to feel the need to feed, and everyone else is still asleep. I assume I'm going to spend a point of willpower to make sure I don't just suddenly fall back into uh, slumber, as this is a bit early for me. Uh, now, I'm not going to open up the heavy drapes to see whether the sun's gone down and get blasted. Uh, but just checking my phone quickly, I want to check the time of sunset in Chicago and see whether it matches up to how wet the time it is now. This sun has just set. Okay, excellent. That's good enough for me. Uh, I am uh, of weak enough blood that it shouldn't hurt me too badly. And as you head out the door, you see that the front door is actually open. Which is a little odd. More than a little odd. You are 100% sure that the front door was locked and closed when you went to sleep last night. Okay, I'm going to do a quick scan around. Is Malenkov, Sierra, Malenkov's servants still there? Malenkov is gone. Sierra is still there. Sierra is still here. Okay, I'm going to quickly poke my head into where Vincent was going to be sleeping. In the bedroom. Is he still there? Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe so. Unless, Vincent, have you been doing anything? Uh, no, I went to sleep. I would have had I would have had Teller, by the way. He'll be sleeping near me. Or keeping watch, whatever he does during the day. I don't know. That's his orders, anyway. Is there a pad of paper or anything like that in this apartment? Yes, in the kitchen there is. Okay, I'm going to quickly scrawl a note. And it says, um, had to dash, girlfriend just woke up in hospital, woke up to found to find Malenkov, woke up to find Malenkov already gone, nothing to do with me, sorry I can't be around to help, see you at the club. And sign off with my name. Uh, further to that... I'm going as I head out the door I will already be calling for a taxi which will not be taking me to the hospital it will be taking me to my apartment because I am not seeing Ada without having gone through my beauty regimen first uh, I need to make myself look presentable and thank goodness for Alan reminding me to brush my teeth because I do have Genghis stuck in it and then after that head off to the hospital all right so you get to the hospital and you get to the ward and the nurse who just talked to you she's just pegging up as you can see she's actually heading out the door and you meet her there oh hi hi Dom. hello lovely lady thank you so much for your assistance earlier and for calling me so quickly uh, i am so excited to see ada again is there anything i need to know uh, just, she's very tired still. She's on a lot of heavy, heavy medication. She's still in pain. Uh, but she is awake. And she, it doesn't seem like she's, she, well, she seems normal to me. Um, at least like a normal young girl. I'm sure that you will be able to tell if there's anything off or anything we need to work on with her. Well, thank you so much uh, for the benefit of your expertise. I'll let you go. I'm sure you, you've been working for a very long time. Yes, another long day. I make a beeline to her ward. Alright. So, you are standing outside Ada's room. And you can still hear that beeping sound uh, of her pulse. Uh, but today it's just a lot faster than it's been the other days. It's not a slow beep. It's more like, well, something is alive in there. As soon as you come in, you see Ada, but this time she is not lying down. She's not pale. She's not asleep. She's not gone. She is sitting up. Um, she still has uh, lots of tubes and lots of IVs and stuff everywhere around her and attached to her and um, as soon as she walks in the door she turns her head 
12? I stride over to her, wrap her in my arms, regardless of the tubes sticking into her, and squeeze her very tightly. I let her go. And the first thing I can think to say is medical tube chic. It's a new fashion. You should get a photographer in here. We could get you in GQ. <laughs> hi, hi, doll. <laughs> she makes an attempt of, at laughing, uh, but she quickly turns into a coughing fit. Uh, hello. I am just thinking now, actually, the possibility someone needs to advertise this expensive medical equipment. But how are you feeling? Um, I'm, I'm tired. Long, I am sure you are. How long, how long has it been? It's been a couple of nights. Uh, you've been under, uh, but you've been in the best possible care. Your parents were incredibly worried, but I came here as soon as I could, and you look as beautiful as you ever have. <laughs> I'm sure I've looked better, but thank you. Well, yes, you, you have looked better. But don't worry about the appointments you missed. I have covered for them. You're not going to get in any trouble with any magazines or photographers. That's all sorted. The most important thing right now is that we get you healthy and back home, which is where you are going to stay for a good long time safely. Yeah, I mean, I... I guess I do have to recover, but I do have to get back to work soon again. So. Well, let's go easy with that. You've been through quite an ordeal, and it's my number one priority to keep you safe now. No more exposing you to nightlife elements, you know. None of that. Just you and me from now on, okay? Oh, oh okay. Um... Have you got that? Yeah, yeah, of, of course. I, I'm i sorry about what happened. I. Oh, it's okay. You don't need to apologize much at all. It wasn't, it wasn't really your fault. I go back and hug her. Are you, are you okay? You seem a little off. I'm just so, I, I can't tell you how relieved I am to see you up and awake again. I was worried I was going to lose you. Uh, you've never seen me in such a state, and I don't think you ever will. Uh, but I... Let's say I drank too much last night, and that is obviously a mistake I don't often make. I will never do it again. Oh, Dolph. She raises her hand and, and caresses your cheek and she looks at you with those those eyes that once again has a life back in them. Um, and you can see she's almost tearing up. Oh don't don't cry, don't cry. You know you know how it makes you all puffy. I get a tissue. Uh yeah. Um I just wanna go home. I don't want to be here anymore. I know, I want to take you home as well, and believe me, right now I am fighting the urge to just yank all of these tubes out of your arms and uh, whisk you away, but that would hurt, and you do need to be here right now. Yeah, I know. You haven't done anything, right, with with that guy? You just he him. won't... He won't be troubling you anymore, don't worry about that. The law got involved, and he will no longer be a hazard. Okay, as long as you didn't... You just contacted the police, right? Like I said, you will not be interacting with that scene anymore. What do you... What do you mean with, with that scene? The kinds of people that would see you as a meal, Ada, I don't want to have to spell it out. No. No, of course not. I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm still a little confused. Of course you are. Of course. I can tell. And that's fine. Well, I'm glad you're here. I don't think I've been awake very long. Not according to the nurse, and she was a delight, I can tell you. Uh, she has done a wonderful job looking after you. Oh, oh that's good. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out, I'm going to find the chief nurse or however the hierarchy in this place works. I'm going to tell them what I think and that is that you need to be in here for another 24 hours to be observed. Yeah. And then tomorrow night I will be coming back and I will be taking you home where I will get you safely under lock and key. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't... Well, if the police is involved, I I don't suppose that I'm... You know... <laughs> oh, I know. I know how given to wanderlust you are. I remember how it was you that twisted my arm to go to that jazz club in the first place. And I don't want you just wandering out of the apartment and getting yourself into trouble while you're so unwell. So I'm going to have to enforce some strict measures, but we'll talk about them when we get you home. Okay? Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good girl. Oh, okay, well... <clears throat> I love you. I go in for a kiss. I, I love you too. Um, <laughs> she looks a little... You a little weird. It's, it's like she can tell that something is, is very odd and very off about you, but she can't really... Dis- distinguish if it's the medication or if it's you or what it is well you you better get going then it won't be long until you see me again get yourself some rest okay I will. if there's any up-to-date magazines in this place i'll make sure they get delivered to your ward and i will try and get in touch with your parents yeah thank you if you could get my mom out here i would really love that of course okay thank you i love you i love you too I leave. I do what I said in terms of getting in touch with the nurse, saying what I think, and I'm going to use a little bit of uh, awe with uh, presence to really hammer home the fact that this is a good idea. I'm sure they would already be doing this, given that she's just woken up from a coma, but I am very keen to enforce the fact that she is going nowhere without me. They agree completely. Um, they can definitely see the benefit of that for not being alone. Excellent. Well, in that case, I will hand over to the other gentleman. All right. So you wake up to someone doing something in the kitchen. You can't really hear what it is, but it sounds like someone is just rearranging some things or, or searching for something in the cupboards. Both of you. I rise a little bit groggy immediately hungry again despite Dolph's pompous attitude I have to agree with him that's with all this moving around I, I need to find some maybe tonight maybe tonight I'll have something my mind as always when I awake briefly thinks of my sire and her expression and her presence it goes away after a few seconds, but it's always there when I wake. Really, I'm going to need to uh, talk to her soon. I'd like that. I really want to see her soon. And I kind of then stop thinking about that and reassert myself into the situation. and look around and look for others, sort of going, Evening, everyone. Evening, ah. sir. Teller is the only one in the room. Teller. Where's everyone else? Uh, I haven't, um... Uh, he looks the way he looked yesterday with the magazines. Uh, um... I think those of us who are here in the apartment... Oh, well, sorry. I kind of frown. And, yeah, I start just sort of looking around, looking for Alan, I... I did notice the piece of paper, and I kind of looked at it and read what Dolph had said, and I frowned and folded it and put it in my coat pocket. Yes, I believe the gentleman who looked like he hadn't showered... Um, excuse me. Uh, he's gone. He's gone, sir. What about Sierra? She is in the kitchen, sir. And Alan? I have not checked up on Alan, but I believe he's still asleep. Hmm. 
Okay. Great. He's gone, you say? That's... Yes, and, and that... And that other gentleman. Yes, no, I know. He's uh, looking after his... <laughs> I walk over, lower my tone. He's got very fond of a ghoul of his, if you know what I'm meaning. A, a ghoul, sir, yes. A blood mm. servant, as you call them. Yes. Well, not our business. Word of advice, if you see uh, Mr. Dolph Sheng again, be very careful, Teller. He's one of the, you know, the sorts who might do something very nasty to you. To me, sir? If you cross him, that is. Well, well sir, I would never. Good, I'm glad, don't. I don't intend to. I don't intend to. Anything I should know, Teller? Has, um... Has, uh, Miss Strauss, uh, mentioned me? Uh, no, sir. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of do give a bit of a look, actually, when he says I'm sorry. What sort of feel it? Is he actually sorry? He, he does seem sorry. He, he knows how much, um, she means to you. Hmm. I actually do nod and go. Thank you, Della. You're welcome, sir. I will tell you if she gets in contact. She's been very quiet ever since she started seeing that. The unknown artist, I believe he calls himself. Unknown. Unknown. I tell you this, Della, we need to... Mm. The man is a... Is, uh, he has no talent, you know? He's one of those, uh, like, look at me, I'm doing something spectacular. Oh, I'm so amazing. Him and Dolph would get on just swimmingly, I feel. Yes, sir. Uh, I uh, I don't know much about uh, Mr. Dolph. Uh, Mr. Shing, sorry. Uh. Problem with Dolph is he's like everyone like that. Born with gifts, natural beauty. Oh, he's attractive, Dolph. I, I, he's attractive, Teller. I, I'll give him that. I'm not blind. And what do they do with it? They, 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 they use it. They, they just, you know, they're like, oh, it's so easy. It's not like people like you and me, Teller. People have to work. Work hard. Hmm? Yes, sir. I know all about that, sir. Good. All right. Alan! Alan! I start, like, just walking around calling Alan's name. Right. Before that happens, um, Sierra has actually reached Alan's room and she's knocking on his door. And I uh, hear, hear the knock, and I, before that, I, I also heard the noise in the kitchen, and I push myself awake with an effort, as it always is now, and I feel my jaw. Shit, that still hurts. I've never been attacked before, and, and I know it was two nights ago, but why doesn't it, why doesn't it heal? I try to push my blood into healing that. Uh, superficial damage that I've taken in my face. And I feel immediately better, but suddenly also very, very hungry. Oh, shit, this is um, And the knock interrupts my thoughts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's there? Sierra opens the door and she looks at you. She gives you a little smile, almost like she finds it funny that you're like, you just woke up and you look a little uh, like someone who just woke up. <laughs> and she walks into you and she sits on the edge of your bed and she looks at you, almost like a mother would look at her child. And she hands you a glass of what smells like really, really, to you, really delicious blood right now. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> well, what do you think it is? And me, being a, a vegan, as they call it, and they try to slander someone who only drinks from animal, I hesitate for a bit, and it's very difficult to resist this right now. You will actually have to make a roll in order to resist it. A willpower roll. All right. Mm. 
Uh, that is that is uh, four successes. Okay, you can resist the blood if you want to. Yeah, and I, I look at her, and, and when she gives me that sort of motherly look, and she gives me this, which is essentially food, it's like she's prepared a meal for me. Uh, uh, something about it that I, I, I feel, I feel rude and, and bad to, to refuse it. So I, I actually, I, I raise the, the glass to my nostrils, and it smells very good. I, I take a, a, a sip. And it tastes amazing. Uh, compared to animal blood, this is definitely full-bodied blood. Um, and you can't help but just start drinking from it. And I just enjoy it. And I, it's like a, uh, it's like a soothing blanket is being put over my mind. And I, uh, I don't think of what I'm doing. I'm just emptying the glass. Lick my lips. Thanks, thanks. Good evening. Good evening, have. I've had worse, uh, uh awakenings. <laughs> I bet you have. How, how are you doing? Well, I, I'm doing... I'm doing fine. Malenkov disappeared, uh, unsurprisingly, during the night. What? It, it... Oh, you haven't heard? Well... No. No. Um... <laughs> Shit, I thought I thought I'd convince him to stay. Oh, that. Yeah. Do you think? What do you think he'll do? Will he come back to, to, to for us to take him to the, to the meeting? I know as little as you do. Uh, despite him being my blood brother, essentially, I don't know where he is, when he appears, when he disappears. Oh um, my! Uh, you, you 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 gotta you gotta some kind of history. You you know each other for a while. Yeah. Yeah, we have. We, we've. <laughs> it's a long story, isn't it? You're yeah, the you're the youngest one in the group, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess I am. <laughs> but the, 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 the real problem, you see, is that I, I didn't have much of an upbringing, if you say so. <laughs> I never knew my, still don't know my side, and uh, I, 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 my social club is not the best either. So, uh, oh. Um, yeah, you, yeah, you know, I, I never really, uh, I haven't really needed to get in touch with it so far. And it's, uh, Isn't that very atypical for Camarilla? Just as, as far as I, I've read up on this, um, but you, you put a lot of pride in your heritage, don't you? I, I would, I. No, you wouldn't know. No, of course no, not. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. Well, it's, but, it's very interesting. You're very interesting to me. Oh, really? You know, because you remind me of, of how our kind are raised sometimes, because we don't really put that much not that much pride in our heritage or our age or generation or it's just it's more about ability, you know? It's more about what you can do. It's not about age or what ladder in the hierarchy you're in. It's no, I was curious about what what Malenkov said yesterday. He, he, he said your kind doesn't allow these kind of things, like you know what happens. Yeah. Uh, but do do you? Uh, is that something that are you, sounds like you you're some kind of lawless society? Is is that? Is that <laughs> what it is? Hmm, I wouldn't say so. Um, it's it's a little difficult. Um, as for now, our situation is a bad, is uh, unstable, to say the least, um, which is one of the reasons why we're here. Uh, we don't necessarily think that the future for Kenan and Sombra lies within uh, this bad. We think that we can be much more useful for the Camarilla, and I think the Camarilla can be much more useful for us. All right, so so some straight up cooperation between. Yes. Factions. Yes, that is that is correct. But well, that sounds like it's like a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, uh, some people think and some people don't. It's uh, um, we've been at war or uh, enemies for many, many, <laughs> many years now. So I think the idea of of getting the enemy on your side is uh, appealing to some and appalling to others. 
right uh, the old old feuds uh, i'm sure uh-huh yeah you have no idea i i guess a uh, kind of a bliss in that way but uh maybe i'm about to get drawn into things now i don't, I don't know I, 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 we're just still drivers anyway but I, i'm glad you find me uh, fascinating it's uh, maybe i am an uh, sort of off sort in this whole thing yeah, you are, because you don't know anything, and I love that. I love that you're not like the two others, you know. Being all-knowing, and and them desperately trying to get you on their side, and and telling you how to be the correct vampire is uh, kind of funny to watch, you know. They should help you find out what you want to be, instead of trying to pull you in two directions, if you ask me. But what do I know? As he's talking to me, I, I start to feel a little bit sort of uh, wary. I'm, 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 I'm starting to get a bit worried that she's sort of trying to pull me into something uh, uh, that's going on here. But I, I nod and I, and I smile tentatively and I'm still kind of enjoying her company. Alan! Alan! Oh, I think Alan, your friend is Alan, calling for you. Alan! Alan! Oh. Alan. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in here. I'm, I'm awake. I'm, a, I'm awake. I stand up. And I give uh, Sierra a smile and I raise the glass again and I, I, I take it with me as I go out into the hallway uh, to meet Vincent. Alan, I... Where'd you get that? Uh, well... There's another one in the kitchen. I made some for all of you. Ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, just a little... Just a little... Uh, morning wake, uh, wake up uh, drink. <laughs> I kind of smile and I just very quickly... I just go to the kitchen because I'm hungry and uh, this is good. This is very good. I, I go to the glass. I don't even... I give it a quick sommelier sampler and then I just start drinking very heavily, just like thinking internally, I need this. This is good. This is good. Oh. Sierra is leaning against the wall with her arms crossed and looking at you with a big smile. Were you hungry? I wipe my mouth. There's a bit of blood on my hand, which I kind of lick. Mm. Yes, I, I was. How does it taste? Well, it's definitely fresh. It's not something she's brought with her, essentially. It's something that she's found somewhere. Um, it tastes good. It's not bad blood at all. It's, uh, it's above average in quality. Mm. I am relieved. Again, my palate, it's not my fault. Um, Sire has explained to me many times, it's its a, <laughs> a feature, I suppose, of our blood. But I can't help it. So much blood is just worthless. Well, unless you're really hungry. But in this case, I enjoy the drink. I look to Sierra and I say, Where did you find uh, this fine vintage? Oh, outside. Good. Do you need to know more, or I can tell you the details? I kind of toy with the glass in my hand and say, No, you know, maybe I don't need to know. Malenkov, where is he? I don't know. Wonderful. That's that's great. I looked at the clock. What's the time? It is eight in the evening. So, we have an hour to find Malenkov. Wonderful. Great. Oh, you, 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 have, you got a number for him or something? No, he doesn't use cell phones. Ah, oh, shit. Of course he doesn't. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, how far away is it? The Succubus Club? 50 minutes, so we have 45 minutes. I mean, is it... Is it possible, do you think, Miss Sierra? Has he gone early? I mean, he was sold <laughs> the idea last night by... No, 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 he hasn't. He's not. No. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know, but that would be very unlike him. Yeah. Well, with all due respect, Miss Sierra, at the end of the day, we have our orders, but it, you're the delegation. What do you want to do? Like... I mean, I want to talk to the prince, that's what I'm here for, but I don't know what your orders from him are. He requested he'd like both of you nice and safe. Oh, at the I see. Yeah. Mm. 
That's quite a task with Melonkoff. Hang on a minute. Tell her! Tell her! Uh, it's, sir? Sir? It occurs to me at this point, Tenor, that part of your job would have been to keep an eye on us while we were sleeping. Where the uh, hell's Malenkov? I, I, uh, I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I must have do I must have dozed off. It's, I've been up all night securing the apartment. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, uh, so no idea at all. We, uh, okay, so... I'm sorry, sir. What possible venues do we have? Something that's close by. But I mean, not much is open at this time. You know, what, what's he not going to do at 8 in the evening? It's not like he can go clubbing. He's going to um, go for a stroll. I mean, yeah. honestly, guys. Do you need him? Uh, no, not me personally. I mean, it's part of the job that we're supposed to escort the both of you. And he goes off on his uh, uh, own. I, I, I have no idea what they're going to say. Neither do I, but she has a point. I'm not going to lie. We have no idea where he bloody is, and it's not as if he's a neonate. He well, if, if he, he comes back here, then maybe be... your your friend here, this Mister Tally, can he, he can just give him a ride down to the SC, right? Yes. yes what about can. your friend, um, the model guy? Maybe he's seen something. Well, yeah. I mean, he's been outside, hasn't he? Yes, I mean... He has, but he's been attending to... I, I go over to Alan and show him the note. He's off attending to some personal matters. He'll be where he needs to be. Uh, I suppose, actually. Tell her, have you got a phone on you? Uh, y y yes, sir. Several. Good. Hand me one, a quick one. I, I remember his number. Uh, yes, he gives you a non-touch screen mobile phone. Hmm. Yes, I use the old-fashioned push buttons, and I ring Dolph. He did give his number, and I have remembered it. I'm quite good at remembering numbers, after all. And as he does that, I'm I'm looking around to see if there are any signs of where Malenkov has left to. All right, so let's take one thing at a time. Uh, Dolph, right as you finish talking to uh, the head nurse, your phone rings. Who does it say is calling on the display? Probably unknown number. Hmm. I'll answer it. Dolph? Ah, the voice from my dreams. Vincent. Good to know you've been dreaming of me. So, as always, mild complication for our lovely meeting tonight. Uh, uh, one of our friends has gone for a walk. I don't suppose you have any idea where or why? No, when I woke up he had already gone, which would imply to me that he left before we went to sleep. Or well, just after we went to sleep. It would imply to me that he left just after we went to sleep, or he has uh, one of his retainers wake him up right as sun is setting. Uh, I know that I left the apartment almost on the cusp of sunset, so I uh, think he's probably been out of the apartment for most of the day. I see. Well, I'm not going to lie. Uh, our friend is looking around a little, but I'm of the opinion that maybe we just go to the party without him. What do you think? Uh, I'm already about to get a taxi there, so there's not much I can do. Uh, all we know is he was looking for a club. Hmm. And, frankly, if he is going to wander off during the day, well, I know what the prince or the sheriff is going to say. They'll say, well, why didn't we have mortals guarding him? But, frankly, uh, Sierra is the only lucid one of the pair. I'm inclined to... On rare occasion, on this one, agree with you, Dolph. All right, be well. We'll we'll see you shortly. Yes, I'll uh, I'll see you there. I hang up, and I look to Sierra, and I look to Alan. Well, nothing. No. no. Listen, Madam Sierra, I'll be perfectly blunt with you. At the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned, he's ignored our attempts to keep him safe. He's ignored our attempts to be pleasant. He's ignoring everything. And I am not able to stop him if he wanted to leave, which he has. Would you agree with this, that you... Well, forgive me, you do seem slightly more with it. Thank you. No problem. 
Alan, anything? Have I found anything? Um, what are you looking for exactly? I guess I'm looking for any indication, uh, like... As if you'd found something somewhere, you know, maybe an open newspaper or anything that would say something about an event. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not likely that I'd find anything that he, 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 that he would leave something after. But. Well, all you can see is where he allegedly slept uh, during the night. And you can see where his two um, henchmen stepped beside him um they've all they've left as well yes yeah all they, three of them are gone no trail of, of breadcrumbs i'm guessing no you you can't really see anything um that would indicate anything yeah i'm just shrugging at vincent's oh i got nothing i don't know if it, if he's there he's there but i don't you haven't even told him where to go, so... He, he, like I said, it would be up if he came back here to... Tell her, perhaps, to take him there. I agree totally. We've done our part. We've got you, Sierra, and maybe you're all that matters. Tell her, did you remember some appropriate attire tonight? Uh, so I've put out three different suits for you, so you can choose. Wonderful. Miss Sierra, I assume you won't need anything. Alan, I'm guessing you haven't brought anything with you. Oh. You can have one of mine. Come, come with me. And, Miss Sierra, if you just give us 20 minutes to get ready, we shall head. 20 minutes? Good lord. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, ladies. I laugh a little. Yeah, me too. Actually, seeming in good humor for a change. And I lead Alan into uh, the room, and as I'm sort of going to this wardrobe, picking out my suit the best one first of all and then i hand one to alan to try i say so a few things alan i'll be quick tonight a lot of things could happen but when it comes to the socializing aspect you are going to need to be <sighs> let's wrinkle my nose some of our esteemed friends might give you a bit of a hard time do you know why um, no, just tell me. This is not an opinion I hold personally. Even my sire doesn't actually. Well, you mean, I know my clan is, is, is sort of an outsider clan, if, if that's what you're referring to. Good. Yes, it's not that you're an outsider clan. I mean, Nosferatu are always welcome in Elysiums. It's more that only the really thick skinned ones kind of thrive. A certain clan uh, are very keen on, you know, especially in this court, demeaning you, making fun of you. There might be jokes made. Yeah, the whole sewer rat thing, I get that. Now, personally, I think that's not very nice. I think everyone has a use, regardless of lineage, and even if you are, if, even if some of you do dwell in sewers, you don't. So, why be unpleasant to you just because of that? But, for tonight, you're going to need to accept it. Or at least, you know, take it on the chin. You get my meaning. Don't, be, don't do a Dolph. You see me very efficiently getting into the suit and very quickly, very uh, uh, obviously used to doing this, tying the tie and putting it all into a fashion like I'm putting on a set of stage clothes and it has to take a minute. What stature do you have? I just, uh, to see how, how the, uh, suit fits. My stature is quite thin and small, but a little bit athletic around the shoulders. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite short myself, and maybe the, your shoulders are a little bit wider than mine, but okay, it's not too bad. And, uh, I just nod. Good. Uh-huh. Good. I've... Yeah. Honestly, my sire always taught me that everyone has a use. Hmm. Everyone. And, I'll be honest, I sort of lower my voice, looking to the door. I'll be honest, Alan. I was incorrect about my initial assumptions on you. Which were? I assumed you were the weak link. I assumed your inexperience, your hesitance, that would be the problem. But I was wrong. 
It turns out it's Dolph. <laughs> man, man, we don't we don't need this kind of politics and, and mongering against each other, man. It's we're we're, we're, uh, we're coterie, right? That's what you're Adam, saying. it's got nothing to do with that. I personally don't actually have a problem with Dolph. Bit of a pause there. It's just that he's unpredictable. Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dangerous. I can see that. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, but just be, just, I'm just saying, be aware that his way, I don't know what he's been telling you, but his way is a way, but not necessarily the correct way. There are better ways of doing things. I mean, yeah, but you know, you saw what he did. You, you, you must understand that his, uh, his, this person that was close to him, he, he was, she was fed from in, in front of his eyes, and, and then he confronted that man. I'm, I'm sure this is extreme circumstance, man. I can understand a little bit of anger. I can understand a little bit of desire to do something. But even I... And there's a bit of a pause as I do think of Mr. Unknown. Even I would draw a certain line. You've got to be careful about Dolph. The important thing is that he doesn't really care about anyone other than, other than himself and, and, I'm not an idiot, the ghoul... Whatever she is, I'm not going to mess with that. Don't you worry. But just, just remember that I'm being honest with you. No, 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 I don't yeah. necessarily care about you either. But I'll be honest. I saw dead in the eyes. I am concerned about my survival, and your survival. I'm thinking is going to be my survival, and I'm happy to return the favor if you get my meaning. You can I tell on him? Is that what? Is that what you're saying? No, 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 no. That's not. What I'm, I'm just saying future reference. Right. Yeah, I get that. And and and. Of course, you, it, it does bother me a little bit that he it, he has done what he, he did and he had, he had no, there was no remorse at all. You know, I never killed someone, N neither person nor, of course not, a, 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 I hesitate, a kindred, you know, of course I didn't, I never killed anyone. So to me, him not showing anything, it, it is disturbing, I'll, I'll agree with that. Hmm. In his defense... We're all capable of that, Alan. You do know that, right? I uh, flex my fingers and I feel a strange kind of jolt going through the hands. I look down at him. Yeah. Good. I'm trying to be honest with you. Why? Because, because I feel just treating you like a piece of shit is actually going to do the opposite of improving you. It's going to get you and me killed. So, we're going to try this. I'm going to try and help you, Alan. But I'd like it to be returned, at least a little. Is that so much to ask? Just, just be straight with me. What, what do you want? What do you want from me now? I just want to know that you're not going to fuck me. <sighs> and by that I mean, do what Dolph's doing and just, oh, fly against the rules and fly against everything. You know we have rules for a reason, right? I do give you a curious look as you suddenly start to explain yourself. Yeah, man. You know, look, I, I, I got your back. All right, we're we're in this together now, and we we see it through, and then that's that, you know. And then after all, we we, we can talk business, you know, talk about contacts and and see what we can do. Okay. Good. Good. Great. And one other thing, I adjust my suit. I finished getting myself ready. I'm going to sound a bit strange, but. Uh... Probably not not now, but maybe before we part ways, if that's what's going to happen after all this. <sighs> would you mind if I just did a sketch of you, would you? I look at you, surprised. A s sketch? Mm. Of me? Yes. No, sure. And you know what? I got some art in my place that I don't know uh, what you're into, but maybe you'll like it, you know. I am a bit of a collector myself. I'm very sparse, you know, but... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can sketch me. I actually nod and smile a little and go, good. Good. And I begin finishing getting ready for the evening. It's interesting because, believe it or not, I was being very truthful there. In my honesty, it's not that I care about Alan, but I need 
someone on my side. And if I can improve him, improvement is a good thing. That's what my father always taught me. And I finish suiting up. And I exit to go to Sierra. Has she done anything to change her appearance? Uh, she has freshened up her lipstick, uh, but she looks almost exactly the same. And I say, well, Alan, if you're ready, Miss Sierra, let us finish all this with a lovely evening at the Succubus Club. I can assure you, the stories are true. It is a fine establishment. Oh, you, you look very good, both of you, I must say. Well, thank you, Miss Sierra. <laughs> almost One like thing. two twins or schoolboys. <laughs> yeah. The first day of school. Only missing a uh, pair of matching sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, actually. I do check my pocket for my sunglasses that I do have, although I won't be wearing them in Elysium. Well, Miss Sierra, I don't know how it is in um, your background, but Elysiums, good Elysiums, are very good places to be, if you know the right people. Good Elysiums are good places to be. That's that's something I need to remember. Well then, let's safely escort you to the Succubus Club, and if your Malenkov friend actually gives a damn about what you're supposed to be doing, we're just going to have to hope he just goes. I'm sure he'll get in. Probably. I stand behind and I just smile. Uh, shall I drive again? Or, um... Ah, yes. Tell her you can stay here and... Uh, if Malakon comes back, tell him where we've gone, and if not, you can get some... Have your beeper ready, but get some rest. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, sir. Have a good evening. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the chronicle The Sacrifice from Chicago by Night for Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition. Chicago by Night is published by our friends at Onyx Path Publishing, and Vampire the Masquerade is published by Modiphius. Our storyteller was Clara Horsher Herbal, and we were also joined by the gentleman gamer Matthew Dawkins. Check them out on social media and on their patrons to support their work in the tabletop space. The intro was composed for us by the amazing Simon Kelle, and he has also provided all of the music for this chronicle. Check out his work at simonkolle.com. Sound effects are created by the fine folks at freesound.org and Sirenscape. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobear and David, for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult Divinity Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with Yalmar and Craig. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and see you soon again.